EasyWebinar is a platform that lets business owners run live or automated webinars that showcase their expertise so they can sell their programs or services. And in this review, I'm going to bring you behind the scenes to show you how EasyWebinar works so you can decide if this marketing tool is right for you. Hey, I'm Melissa, the founder of Wit & Wire, where we help creators turn their skills and passions into profitable online businesses. Webinars are one of the top sales strategies that I use as a course creator. And on top of my Wit & Wire experience, I actually used to manage the marketing teams at Teachable and for Ramit Sethi and ran webinars with 10,000 to 7,000 registrants. So I'm excited to share that expertise with you today as we evaluate Easy Webinar as a platform. Here are the criteria for today's review. First, how easy is it to create a live webinar? Second, what does the live webinar experience look like to you, the host? Third, what is an automated webinar? How do you set it up? And how do the features different from a live webinar? And fourth, who is this the right fit for? And should you start with a live or an automated webinar for your business? Let's take a look. To start, you'll go to witandwire.com slash easy webinar. And from here, if you head over to the pricing page, you can compare the plans. I would recommend that you start on the standard plan. They all have the features that you'll need to run live or automated events. The main difference in price is how many live attendees you can expect. So just to give you a rough estimate, if you've done your marketing homework, you should be able to get 20% of all registrants to attend the live event. So in order to get 100 live attendees, you would need roughly 500 registrants. That'll be different for different businesses. But I would recommend, like I said, start with a free trial of the standard plan. And then if you know that you have more registrants, you can always upgrade to pro later. So you'll click try for free. And on the next page, you will create your account. You'll enter your name, your password, all that good stuff. And I'll meet you in the dashboard to give you a quick tour. This is the homepage of your easy webinar dashboard. And on the homepage, you can create a live event, automated event, or go live now. And then down below, these are all resources from easy webinar to help you get started both strategically and technically with webinars. Along the top, I usually use this main nav to go to my live webinars, my automated webinars, or you'll find your recordings here and you can change your settings anytime on the top right under the um, initial icon. What we're going to do first is create a live event. So here I'm going to click create a live event and I'll give it a title. So maybe for today, this will be how to create and sell online courses. And this is the title that your registrants would see. You can change this later but this will bring us into the webinar builder here. I'm just going to go through a high level overview of what you can do. You'll notice it's not the most modern looking interface, which could be considered a con for easy webinar, but two things first, it's very capable. And I think you can still follow along and change all the settings that you'll need. And second, right now, easy webinar has two versions, classic and easy webinar next. So if you create an account today and you test it out, you'll be able to see what the new builder looks like, but this is the classic version. Now here you can see, you can change the event name anytime as well as your time zone. And because it's a live event, either you'll be running it one time here and you can choose the date and the time of the event in the future, or you could add another time if you wanted two different slots for registrants to choose from, and you have some advanced settings here down below. You might also choose to run a recurring event, perhaps weekly. And in that case, you might wanna decide how many events in the future do your registrants have to choose from? Maybe just you show uh, the next two, for example. Then on the top, you can see registration page and thank you page. Now, again, this is not the most modern looking experience, nor do the registration pages look particularly exciting. So you have two options. Option one, you use this builder to create a very basic registration page that will get the job done. Or if you're a little bit tech savvy, I'll show you where you can get this embed code, but you can instead choose to embed just the button or the opt-in form, let's say on your Squarespace page or your WordPress page on your main site. So if you'd like, what I actually do is I build the registration page on my website and then I embed the opt-in form so that it just matches my existing branding. I'll show you how to do that shortly. For now, if you wanted to use the easy webinar registration and thank you page, you would customize the settings here, head over to the thank you page, make similar choices, and then you would be ready to go. Moving forward, you can also see the event page and the replay page. Event page is where your live attendees go. So you'll want to add a headline, typically the title of the webinar, and then perhaps a sub headline. Maybe it could be uh, with your name, maybe your title or a brief description. You can also move over to offers and I would recommend setting up one offer. This means that during the live event, you'll have the option to turn on a button. I'll show you what this does. You can see, let's click this on. I'm just going to give this a title of sample offer. So you can see it when we do our test. 
And then down below, you would choose what the button says. So maybe we will click customize. Maybe we'll do learn more here. You can choose what you want to say. You can change the color. And then just for now, because we're doing a test, I'll send people to the course builder's sales page just as an example. And then you could add a poll if you wanted. That can be a fun way to build engagement in the chat. And then I'm gonna just head over to the replay page to show you if you wanted, you can keep this on. This automatically creates a replay page and houses your recording so that you can send that out to registrants. It's up to you if it never expires, or maybe you choose a specific date that it expires in the future, maybe a week or two after the live event. I also wanna point out event notifications. In EasyWebinar, you have the option to send your registrants before event emails. For example, the welcome email is the one I recommend. You can customize it here. This is a confirmation email with all of their details. Then I don't typically use after event emails because I send those from my email service provider. So hopping over one more tab to event integration, this is something EasyWebinar does really well. They have native integrations with tons of the most popular email marketing providers, email service providers. And so I happen to use ActiveCampaign. And what I would do is I would click here to activate that connection. And then by default, any registrants would be added to my ActiveCampaign account and they would be tagged appropriately as registrants for this event. So I typically do use my own email service provider for those post-event emails. That's typically what I would recommend for you as well. You could check out the advanced options. I'm not gonna get too deep into these. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and click save and exit, and this will bring us back to the live webinar tab. Now I'm gonna close this briefly. These are all of the preview and I should say the live uh, links that you'll need, but I'm gonna close this because I wanna show you, I was just making a couple of samples earlier. This is the one we just built. You can access those links anytime here by clicking event links. So this is the link to your registration page, your thank you page, the attendee join link. These are all the links that you'll need. I mentioned earlier that you might choose to embed the form on your own page. So to do that, you'll click embed code and then you can customize the text, the color, everything that you need. You might decide that you'll just do the button or maybe you want a registration widget, which actually has the email and the first name, let's say, right there on the page. And it's up to you if you use a custom thank you page or if you stick with EasyWebinar's default. After the event, you'll be able to come in and view analytics to see how many registrants attended. And one of the, I think, strengths of EasyWebinar is their UTM tracking. So if you are a data nerd and you like to use UTMs to track where your registrants came from, EasyWebinar does a great job of tracking that information so you can see which of your marketing strategies are working. Up next, here's how you can go live in EasyWebinar. Here we are on the live event tab, and I'm gonna click enter room. This will bring me into the live broadcast experience. And up first, you're gonna check your microphone and your webcam. So here I can see it picked the right webcam, but the microphone I need to swap to the Shure MB7. So let's change that, make sure these are all right, and click continue. Crucially, even though you can see me here, as you can see on the top, your webinar is not live yet. It will not go live. People will not see you until you click the go live button. You can see it on the top. It says off air. I am not yet live. They cannot see me. You will be able to see the chat on the side, but it's not live until you click go live. So let's just do a little demo, go live. It's gonna give you a five second countdown. And then on the top, you'll know that it's live. And I always like to double check because it says the timestamp here with a flashing red icon. And it says that we're live. You'll also see it says stop recording, which you don't wanna click, but this does confirm that we are recording, we are live, we're ready to go. So just to give you the lay of the land on the right, you can see the chat area. You can also head over to offers and select that sample offer that we made. And now you can see exactly what it would look like. It would broadcast this button, it would put it in that side panel so that all of your attendees could click over to learn more about your offer, likely a little bit later on in the webinar. You can also add polls. And I will say along the top, these buttons are equally crucial. This is where you can either change the settings with the small arrows to your different inputs for webcam and mic, or you can choose to stop video or start it again. Perhaps you might wanna mute. I'm guessing if you're presenting solo, you won't be messing with either of these, but the one you do wanna know about is share. What I usually do during a webinar is I have a PowerPoint, Google slide, or Canva presentation ready to go, and I will share that on screen as I am presenting. So you'll wanna maybe practice this in advance, create a test event just as we're doing here, and see what it's like to orient your screen, share it, and then see what it looks like in the recording. Now, once you're done, you can go ahead and click end, and this will end the event for all of the attendees. 
In the background, the recording will take a little bit of time to process. This isn't a perfect example, but if it's an hour long webinar, it might take an hour to upload. It totally depends. But for now, we're going to go back to the dashboard and you'll find that recording anytime in the recordings tab. You can see I did a little test one earlier. This one, because it was so short, is already ready to go, but it might take a bit of time. It's just good to know. Now, up next, I want to show you how to create an automated webinar. So let's head over to the home tab. You can see create an automated event here, or you might have selected add event at the top and picked automated. So let's create a new one, create and seal online courses, and then click create and schedule. You'll notice the builder looks exactly the same. The main difference is actually on this first tab under event info. It's already selected as an automated event, but now you can see the event time is in the attendees local time zone. And instead of a one-time event, most likely you are creating a recurring event. So here, this setting says that every day there will be a time slot at 8 PM. Maybe we'll go ahead and just change this to 2 PM. Again, it's in their time zone. So what this means is that they're going to see an event every single day. And I would recommend doing two things in the advanced settings. First, I would enable what's called in time registration. This means that if somebody lands on your landing page at 20 minutes till the hour, they're going to see that there is a webinar starting every 15 minutes. So they're going to see only one of those options, but this means that there will always be a webinar starting within 15 minutes of somebody landing on that page. The other setting I recommend is switching the display number of uh, scheduled events. So I usually do two or three available events. You don't necessarily want people to have 12 options. I like to do maybe three available that gives people enough time to choose when they want to watch this broadcast because with easy webinar, it's not like you're sending people to a video that they click play on and that they can fast forward between. Instead, what they're really registering for is more like a TV show that's being broadcast at a certain time. So it'll play straight through. They'll get the replay after that version will be able to start, stop, speed up, slow down. But for this initial automated webinar, it, it feels more like a TV broadcast. I hope that's a helpful analogy. Now, the rest of these settings, again, they look super similar to the previous version, the live event. The registration page, the thank you page, or you could embed the opt-in form on your own page. But the one that's different is the event page. Here you can see it still has the headline and he the subhead, but scrolling further down now, because this is an automated event, you need to provide easy webinar with the video that you had previously recorded. So you have two options. First, you can select from a previous session. So if you ran this webinar live, maybe you want to use that video as the on-demand version for this automated webinar. What you might do instead though, is create your own video recorded in your own separate tool, and then you'll need to host it somewhere. Typically Vimeo is a popular option, and then you'll add the video URL here. And that's the version that will play on demand for these automated registrants. You'll need to indicate the video length. And then over here on offers in the live version, you choose when the button goes live. But what I would recommend for an automated webinar is that you enable an offer to show at a certain timestamp based on your presentation. So you will need to figure out that right time spot by watching your own video. And then you can indicate the timestamp here, and then you'd go ahead and finish out the settings and click save and exit. Now, something that's notable again in the event notifications is that here you might want to add other before event notifications. So maybe you want something to go out here and you could indicate maybe it's an hour before or 15 minutes before. And for each individual registrant, these would be going out at different times because it's based on the specific timestamp of their webinar in their time zone. Once you had finished everything here, you'll click save and exit. It's going to give me an error. This might happen to you. And that's because on the event page, I didn't actually finish this offer. So for now, I'll just go ahead and turn this off and click save and exit. Now you'll see this automated webinar. You'll see the links here. Remember anytime you need to access those links, you'll come in here and click event links and you can see all of them listed, or you could grab the event code. If you wanted to build a registration page on your own site, the other tab here recordings, we mentioned it before. This is where all of your recordings from the live sessions will go, but you can see now that we're a little more oriented, your live events are here. Your automated events are here as the automated event continues to run. You'll want to come in here and view analytics to see the registrants. You can check the data 
EasyWebinar has incredible data with the UTM codes that I think is, again, a huge strength of their platform. And so hopefully this gives you a helpful overview of the different types of webinars that you can run. I will say if you're just getting started as an online business owner, I would recommend running a live version of the webinar first. That's a great way to test the waters. Not only are people interested in registering for the webinar, but does the offer at the end of your webinar convert? Then once you have a proven webinar, then I think it could make more sense to move into the automated version. So that's just the high level strategy of what I think could be a good fit for many business owners. But as always, you know, your business best. One bonus tip, because I forgot to mention it is that when you create an automated webinar, one of my favorite subtle features in easy webinar is the ability to change the live chat to a contact box. So let's go back and click edit event. This is the automated webinar we just built on the event page under chat settings right now, by default, it's disabled, which I think is perfectly fine. I don't personally love when there's like a live chat on the side and you can see easy webinar agrees. It's not even an option, but what I like to do is enable a contact box. This puts a contact form to the side of the broadcast. So if my attendees have questions, they can submit a question and I put my support email address here so that those automatically go to the inbox and my team can help reply. So as a bonus tip, I would recommend looking into this. I think it's a great way to still connect with those attendees and capture their questions without you having to be there live every time. If you're curious to check it out, you can visit witnwire.com slash easy webinar and try that free 14 day trial to see what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Wit and Wire for more online business tips. Now, if you enjoyed this video, here are a few more that I think might be useful.